Hey everyone, welcome to our latest Trade of Black podcast, Sunday night version, Small Cap Sunday. Back at it again for the third week. Off to a great start. I have had lots of great feedback from you guys in the first couple of shows about the stocks that we're covering, including, always as usual, one weekly cannabis stock. And we won't obviously disappoint here tonight because we've got high tide. We'll dive into that and see whether or not it's a stock that we would own, along with an AI company and a big time restaurant stock. So with that, let's welcome in our lead financial writer and head analyst here at TDR, Bill McNarland. Good to see you. Happy Sunday evening. Good to see you as well. Happy to be here. Got an exciting Good show. What a week it's been, huh? Just absolutely yeah. crazy again, but this has been good. I know we got some great feedback last week with a few companies. Village Farms, obviously, was a popular one last week with Crimson Wine. That was a great one as well. We reached out to that team. They've expressed some interest in basically the content we're providing. But again, the idea is to create ideas in the small cap community, companies valued between $250 million and $2 billion as far as market cap is concerned, and really to present you with ideas that you're unfamiliar with, right? Yes. And we have two companies today that were suggested by comments of our viewers last week. So well we're, we're, so if people just keep putting comments and tell us what they're interested in, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we put them part of the show. Yeah, it's great. Uh, okay, so the four companies, they include, as I said, one cannabis stock, which is High Tide, which many I know that are very familiar with here, as well an AI company, a restaurant stock, and finally a stock exchange public company that I think many do not realize, including myself, is a public company, and it's in the small cap uh, space, as I said. Before we dive into tonight's show, as usual, all views on the Trade of Black podcast and the guests on this podcast are purely opinion. You should not treat any opinions expressed by us or our guests as investment advice. The views on this podcast are solely intended to be informational and are not investment advice. Again, we go through strong revenue, strong free cash flow, strong gross margins, healthy credit scores. That is the main goal here every single week on Small Cap Sunday. So with that, Bill, let's begin with the first stock, which is a stock exchange. It's the OTC Market Group. Market cap, $620 million and trade on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol OTCM. Why is this interesting? You know, there's such a need for an organization like this. If you invest in cannabis, most of the companies that you purchase, you probably buy on the OTC. Uh, also, some smaller companies or companies that are listed on big exchanges but in other countries. For example, yep. uh, Numinous would be an example of a company. They're on the TSX in Canada, but they have a dual listing for U.S. investors in, in the U.S. on the over-the-counter market. Yep. Um, so there's a big need for these types of organizations. Long, interesting history of how this went from a disorganized market uh, 25 years ago to a, a premier uh, market that it is today. Yeah, that's for sure. And let's not face it. A lot of these companies are drawn to this exchange, knowing the costs are lower along with the ability to list, which is evidently clear when it comes to, I think, a lot of cannabis companies, given the nature of the industry, right? Yeah. And where this came from in 25 years is amazing. So realistically, when you look at the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, when they were quoting pieces of paper and trying to figure out quotes, that's where this came from. And now it's a, it's a modern exchange uh, serving all kinds of uh, excellent businesses uh, globally. But there was a gentleman, uh, Cromwell uh, Colson, in 1997, he, he saw an interesting opportunity to go from paper to go to a modern uh, exchange uh, for small caps and micro caps. And uh, so he uh, did an acquisition with some others. He still owns 34% uh, of the exchange. And you know, in the year 2000, there was a volume of $30 billion. 22 years later, it's $500 billion. Wow. He really took it into a, a modern exchange. What was the name of that company that Leo DiCaprio pitched when it came to the pink sheets in that movie? But this is not the kind of style of companies that we're talking, but that was one of the greatest scenes in yeah. the entire industry with the cell line. But again, these are real companies producing real revenues. So let's jump right into the charts and focus on the first thing, which is revenue. What did they report last year? What uh, yeah, comes so, so, so they have $101 million of revenue. Where it's so intriguing, where does that $101 million come from? Well, about 20% yeah. of their business comes from fees that they charge companies, but 40% of that revenue comes from data. So this becomes actually a technology play because there's all these uh, companies now listed on the exchange investors want to know 
uh, what is the details about these companies? What are the prices? Yeah. So a retail investor can pay as little as $5 a month for this data, but an institutional investor has to pay as much as $25,000 a month to be able to get the information about what's happening on the exchange. And then they wanted to grow their business additionally. So 40% of their revenue is added services to companies to be able to get the more investment exposure to individual investors. And so it's a beautiful business model where they took the traditional business of the exchange, which is now only 20% of their revenue, and now they added an additional five times the revenue from other services. So in the last three years, revenue has been growing at 15.6% uh, and five years, 12.5%. Uh, Year. Viable industry when you think of how many companies have gone public over the last 10 years with all these emerging industries and they look to this exchange as the first one, but there's where the money is made. I'd be curious to know how many companies are actually listed on this exchange. I guess we can yeah. find that out. Yeah, I, find, I found it. I was looking at number volume and the, the volume, the volume's increasing. Um, but you know what's interesting about this? So th this is a business that's very viable. We can see they got revenue. Everyone knows about them. But I only can find one analyst not completely giving information about the company of the actual exchange. So this actually signifies the whole problem of companies on the OTC is they don't have proper analyst coverage. Even the exchange, which is the leader, doesn't have proper analyst coverage. So this shows us how Thanks. much need there is. That's a great find. Um, okay, so what kind of revenue did we see in the last 12, minute, uh, 12 minutes, 12 months paired with three and five year kegger? Yeah, so they had 101 million. It was the last 12 months. Okay, and they provide uh, a dividend? Absolutely. So this is a, a growing technology company that we understand. The dividend yield is 4.3. But remember in the last show or two shows ago, we talked about not just the dividend yield, but the growth rate. So the three-year growth rate of the dividend has been 21%. Five wow. years has been 12 Wow. per year. So when you add those numbers together, remember that's that's a way that you can predict the future return of a stock. This looks like there should be some uh, additional uh, growth as well while you earn a, a 4% and some uh, dividend. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's look at their current levered free cash flow along with net income. Yeah, so their leveraged free cash, cash flow is $31 million in the last uh, 12 months. The period before 30 million, so it's coming up a bit. And that's because they have a 57% gross marginal profit. They do very well. Because when you think of this, think of this business. No you kidding. sell one new subscription service and data for $25,000, that doesn't really cost you anything to no. add one more subscriber. So they have deep gross marginal profit. And so because of that, their net income was similar to their leverage free cash flow, 26.8 uh, million. Um, because they had just a little bit of depreciation. Um, so this is a, a very intriguing uh, a company. That is where a lot of these exchanges, even when you look at some of the research uh, platforms that we learned with uh, Bloomberg and what they charge like on a monthly subscription, and that's a new viable piece of business, but those margins are massive when it comes to that, right? Adding one new subscriber doesn't cost much of anything. Yeah, no kidding. All right, finally, their credit score, what'd you find? 10.6. This this company wow. is a very financially viable, nice leverage free cash flow. Again, additional revenue is not costing them anything. Turnkey style, right? Moment of truth. Yeah. Needless to say, is this a stock that you would buy? And I assume it is an overwhelming yes. Yeah, it's a green check mark because you know I like dividends and I like growing dividends and I like technology. And this business uh, has it all. And also, this is a business. It's easy to understand. If you buy cannabis stocks. You know about the OTC. We understand this business model. Great find on this one. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Stock number two, uh, AI company called Perfect Corp, which trades, is it on the New York Stock Exchange or under the NASDAQ? New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange. Ticker symbol yeah. P-E-R-F. Uh, this company, they're actually out of Taiwan. So overseas, yes, but easy to buy knowing on the New York Stock Exchange. So what can you tell us about it? Because um, as much as this sounds different from what we've experienced in the past when it comes to the quality of your appearance in life, uh, this is wild as to how this is working moving into the future and what they've uh, basically built out. Yeah, you know, well, first of all, let's talk about the problem. I love AI. I, yep. I love technology. The problem with AI stocks right now is they're extremely expensive. But this is an interesting find because it's AI based and we're going to find out that it's actually very inexpensive 
uh, of a company. So what does this company do? This company is in AI beauty. Um, yep. You basically can go on uh, to a website and they'll tell you all about your skin condition or what type of uh, let's try on some watches. Let's try on some fashion. Um, and, and it's interesting. So I did a report on my skin. Turns out I have dry skin. They gave me a report card for my skin. And then they can suggest uh, products um, that I could use. But the real proof in the pudding, Avon is using it now. Oh, so you did the whole process. Was it easy to use? Or oh, do? yeah. You know, the, just recently, uh, I've been buying eyeglasses online. And you yeah. can try them online. And I didn't think none of this stuff would work. But sure enough, it's amazing what you can do. And so, like, you know, obviously, I'm not that, you know, I, well, I'm not that interested in, uh, you know, cosmetics or such. But I tried it out. I took a look. It was so intriguing about all the things that they would tell you about your skin condition and how you could improve it. Uh, I, I was really impressed. But Avon has given a statement saying that partnering with this company, they have 320% higher conversions in sales and 33% higher average checkout on orders when people use the system. Boom. There yeah. is the statement right there. So but then think about this. Yeah. So 320% higher conversion, which is 33% higher average order when they use this AI system is what Avon was reporting. Yeah, well, you think about it. Like, you know, like someone comes to your home to show you some uh, a lipstick or something. Maybe they only have 12 different kinds. Is this your yeah. color or whatever? They go on to the system and say, okay, here's this perfect one for you. Take a look. Try it on. You see your face with it. And they're like, okay, we can order it. And it's going to be here in a few days. Hmm. That's why the cart is so much bigger. And the conversion is, is because people feel the confidence of trying all these different things. Future's here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the charts. First up revenue. What did we see from last year? $55 million of revenue. They have growth of 17.4% in the last year. Three years was 21.4. Five years was 35.9. So this is a fast growing AI company. What about their 12 month LTM? The last 12 months was uh, yeah. 17 or $55 million was uh, what their revenue was. 55 million and any, um, I was going to ask this, any near term growth catalysts for the company? You know, I, I, you know, they're, they're, they're partnering with additional companies. So I think they, they have the, they have the, the, the big ticket with Avon's vote of confidence now. And so just going out to the rest of the world yeah. and saying, would you like to see a system that Avon is putting in place that's increasing their sales? Mm -hmm. That's their catalyst. All in the data right there. That's yeah. massive. Okay. New York Stock Exchange. Interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. Dividend. Do they have a dividend or no? There's no dividend, but we can, you know, we go down to the, they're reinvesting in their business, coming out with new things. So that's fine. That makes sense as a as shareholder. But their gross margin, drum roll, 80.4%. Now that's a number to stare at. Because wow. you know what? They've already created the AI. They mm -hmm. add new customers. There's not a lot of additional costs. Now, in, in technology, there's something called the rule of 40. So the goal in with fast growing tech companies, you're supposed to take your growth rate yeah. and your gross marginal profit, add them together. And the goal is to get over 40%. And that means you're doing excellent. So they have a gross margin of 80 and they have a, you know, uh, uh, last year, their growth rate was 17.4. That's 97% and change. They've doubled the rule of 40. Do they outline like what their key demo is like Avon? Who's like using a lot of this AI. Do you know that? You can use it online. It's all available. It. You can, tr they have the demos available online. That's how I would, I was using it. I can try on a watch. I can test my skin. It's all there for you to use. Is it mainly, I'd be curious to see if it was more a male or female demographic that they're going it's after. A, it's, or... it's a female demographic, uh, but also the, more and more there's a trend, especially in Asia, that more uh, males are becoming intrigued by yeah. cosmetics. Now, and I'll yeah. tell you an example. It's like when, uh, when uh, the last time I was, I was going through the airport in South Korea, yeah. um, there's a lot of, there's much more cosmetic ads with male than we would see in North America. So then there's a trend of growing to the other 50% of the population as well. South Korea. Did you like it? 
Oh, I love it. Yeah, I've been there many times. It's uh, yeah. it's a fabulous uh, place to go. All right, levered free cash flow and net income. What did you find? Yeah, so last year was thirteen point two million of leverage free cash flow. Um, the year before that, they were flat. They were reinvesting into their business, but last year they had a net income of uh, five million dollars. Um, so this, in all components that we look at, is uh, an amazing tech company that looks to be extremely undervalued. Uh, to give you an example. Um, they have uh, their stock price is two dollars and twenty five cents. If we took their liquid assets and paid off all their debt, there would be a dollar thirty four available. So you can almost buy half the company with just the cash and liquid assets they have in the bank. Wow, another great find. What's the credit score? Five point seven. So there's no credit issues here. You got a fast growing AI company. It's flying, um, doing very well. Uh, again. Just like the first company that we looked at, the exchange, there's just not a lot of people that are aware of this company and it's on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, it's impressive. All right, moment of truth. I think we got another green check mark coming. Absolutely. Would yeah, I, yeah. I, I, would, I would, I would buy this. You know, because I, I want AI investments, but I'm scared of the valuation of traditional AI investments. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I can get this for, you know, 50 cents on the dollar uh, based on the cash that's sitting in the bank. All right. Two down, two to go. Uh, next up is a restaurant stock. Am I pronouncing this correctly? Is it Portillo's? Uh, Portillo's. Portillo's. Uh, I had to look it up as well. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Highly recommended by one of our viewers, which is Dylan Rogers. So people out there, if there is a stock that you want us to highlight, as Bill said earlier, send us ideas like Dylan. So uh, this company trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol PLTO. So where are they based out of? And how'd you yeah. find out about this company? Yeah, it's so a Chicago based. I, I, I'd never heard of the company before it was suggested uh, by Dylan. Uh, yeah. But I was interested in looking at it because uh, I, I love cult followed um, fast food restaurants in the US. So he described it as being something similar to uh, Chick-fil-A. Um, in their cult following, uh, sa same camp as In-N-Out or Shake Shack. Uh, so I was very intrigued. Uh, you know, I was at In-N-Out a couple of weeks ago. I, I love the model. It's great. Uh, I'd love to find out more about it as a stock. And one thing I noticed too, they have coverage. They have as many as 10 analysts that are currently covering them. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the market cap was $678 million, And there's a right. lot of analyst interest in uh, quick service restaurants. But I want us to step back and think about something. The okay. first two companies we looked at that had similar market caps. Well, the first one, and there was no interest from the analyst community. That's this wild. company has 10 analyst coverage. So let's mm -hmm. think about this as we go through the example. Good point. It's a very good point. Um, you also outlined a couple of cult following uh, restaurant examples, in and out Chick-fil-A. In any way, does this company like compare to some of these cult following brand name restaurants that you've outlined? Yeah, I went online. So so Dylan tipped me off about it. It's mostly based in uh, the Chicago area. They do have some restaurants through Arizona would be their second largest, some in Southern California. I wasn't as familiar, but when you go on Reddit or you go on um, the internet, there's a lot of people that are so excited. So for example, uh, they released a chicken sandwich uh, yeah. not too long ago. And I, oh, there's all this commentary on the internet about how people are so excited to go try their uh, chicken sandwich. Okay, let's move to the charts. As you said, revenue, $689 million last year. Yeah, so when we, when so so the big thing we're gonna look at this week for the next yeah. two companies yeah. is we're going to look at a checkout analysis. Okay. And so this is something you're not gonna see it anywhere else. It's something that I do. I, I, don't, I don't see it being popular anywhere else. But what I wanna know when I look at a company like this compared to their competitors, I want to know how much money do they make when someone spends $10 at their restaurant? What'd you find? Well, let's take a look. So first of all, we got to compare it to McDonald's. McDonald's okay. is the standard in the industry. I compared it to another cult favor, Shake Shack. I can't do In-N-Out because In-N-Out is private. And okay. then we compared it to their company. Hmm. So here's the first thing to consider. What is the cost of food when you go spend $10 at one of these restaurants? Right. So it's actually, it's quite high. So this is your um, cost of goods sold. So this is not just the food, but this also includes the wrappings and the paper, you know, the different things that go with it when you get an extra ketchup uh, 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 container or something. So for Portillo's, it's $7.58. Uh, 
McDonald's is $4 and 36 at 30 cents and Shake Shack is $6 and 30 cents. So their cost of food compared to what they sell it for is very high. So how do you get that down? Well, you can do what McDonald's did and instead you can raise prices, which they haven't done. So I'll give you an example. Uh, around the time of COVID, I used to get these coupons in the mail from McDonald's and they would tell me yeah. that two people can dine for twelve ninety nine. And today I get the coupon in the mail and it's two people can dine for eighteen ninety nine. So they pushed it onto the consumer to be able to keep this margin. A lot of the cult favored uh, companies did not, including In-N-Out, Shake Shack, and Portillo's. They weren't able to push it like the companies like McDonald's did. Mm. And so they've had a lot of shrinkage here on that percentage example. When in doubt, throw it to the consumer, right? Not yeah. the all, I don't think it's a long-term solution, but that's the times we live in right now. Yeah. And so, so then there's the other things we looked at. We look at SGNA, that's your employee cost and some other costs put in there as well, running the business. And then there's the CAPEX. You, even if you're leasing restaurants, you have to make them look like your brand. And that's very expensive. That can be a lot more than the, the lease. When you go to every Shake Shack in the country, it looks exactly the same. That's very expensive to do. So what's interesting is when you order $10 worth of food at Portillo's, yeah. they end up with a seven cent loss. Oh, McDonald's. Right. What started out is a, interesting. It's like starting to <laughs> unravel here, Bill. <laughs> so, so, so McDonald's gets $3 and Shake Shack gets a dollar seven. Wow. Okay. Now what's interesting about McDonald's, McDonald's last earnings came out and they're going the wrong direction. People hmm. are not coming back because it got too expensive. Their experiment to raise costs didn't work. Now, what's interesting is they're coming out starting the first day of summer in the U.S. was announced yesterday. They're coming out with a new $5 meal. And it's going to be, this gets interesting. It's not a double cheeseburger. It's a McDouble. And so there's shrinkflation. There's only one piece of cheese instead of two. It's not, they're saving money there. And, and then you get four chicken nuggets instead of six. And you get a small fry and a small Coke. But they can't afford to put that out for five bucks. In the press release, or the announcement, or the announcement that was on CNBC yesterday, not press release, CNBC it was leaked actually. They can't afford to do this. So you know where they're getting the funding? Where? They're actually getting it from Coca Cola. Oh my God! So, so it, it's it's getting that challenging. Yeah. Because consumers, because the problem with food is you know who the biggest competitor to fast food why is? would that make sense for coca-cola to get part of something like this if the model doesn't well they just sense? well they just have to determine how much advertising that they're getting in this right yeah so you're, you're getting forced to take this five dollar meal with coca-cola you can get a different drink but the ad is just right there yeah. so that's the only way they can make it first but the biggest competitor to fast food is making food at home mm. you know yeah. when i go to walmart walmart doesn't have a competitor with grocery because you need groceries. Of course. But yep, I hear you. you can make food at home. And um, so that's the challenge with this business. Yeah. All right. Levered free cash flow along with that income. What'd you find? They, they had negative 11 million last year. And then mm. uh, they had 1.5 the year before. But, you know, th their CAPEX costs uh, are, are challenging. Um, they had CAPEX of our capital, uh, you know, expenditures of 84 million last year. Wow. Um, well, so it's, it's challenging business. Well, the way this third stock started off, I was ready to start buying, but this quickly unraveled. So, uh, you definitely some warning signs with this company. What was their credit score? 1.5. Okay. Yeah. So, right. okay. Let's stop. Why is there so many analysts? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's a good point. Why is there so many analysts? Because the company's going to need to raise some money. Yeah. And so the analyst community wants to fight for that investment banking business. Yeah. So they're course. going to naturally cover the stock. That's it. Yeah. That is how it works. Well said. And hopefully some people got some uh, information and education on how this whole system works. Analyst coverage is when you need money. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Moment of truth. I think we're going to experience our first red X here tonight. Yes. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to say, first of all, I'm glad to find it. I'd like to go eat there, but mm -hmm. it's just not something, you know, I'd be interested in buying at this time. Okay. Which makes sense. All right. Three down, one to go. All helpful information. And lastly is our first cannabis stock and only cannabis stock here on the Small Cap Sunday edition. And it's Canadian company High Tide. 
which I think a lot of viewers here are going to be extremely happy that we're covering. They trade on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol HITI with a current market cap of $189 million. Bill, you mentioned the word cult in the previous stock as far as like some of these fast food chains. And this company, no exception. They have a lot of people who like this company and this stock. And why not? Based on what they're building out. So um, what, what, what do you like first thing comes to mind about this company? You know, I, I love the original story. You know, you have the uh, the CEO uh, who invested $50,000 in, in the original location and uh, just kept building, you know. And, and the second thing is um, they have very loyal customers that are members and also some of them will pay actually a monthly fee to be a member. Yeah. Um, so when you have a loyal following of people and you have a stock as well, you end up with a, a cult following of uh, investors as well, which is an excellent thing. You know, uh, the, the, you know, Warren Buffett recognized this before. He used to buy Harley Davidson, and he'd say yeah. the reason I like Harley Davidson is because it's one of the few companies that people will tattoo the logo on their body. And it's well, true. Right? When I look at when I look at High Tide, um, it's basically their Acana Cabana Elite Club. Yes, they have a lot of loyal uh, members, that's for sure. A great uh, retail foot model as well that they're expanding. And when I look at the you know, near-term growth strategies, uh, it was announced back in January that the province of Ontario, um, where they announced the increase of cap on the number of stores to licensed companies from 75 to 150, which presents, as I said, some near-term growth strategies, not to mention some overall cannabis economics, but uh, I'm getting press releases almost every week about them with their uh, signature uh, Canna Cabana uh, dispensary opening up in all kinds of different locations across Ontario. So clearly they're taking advantage of that situation or uh, opportunity as of right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's now move to the charts. Revenue last year was strong, $497 million. Revenue LTM, what'd you find? Yeah, they uh, grew 23.6% uh, uh, over last year. Uh, three years was 803 But the next step is we have to do the same thing we did the last company. Let's take a look at a checkout uh, analysis of $10 spent in their store. Yeah. Uh, five to seven year outlook for this industry too. Um, not including here on the charts right now, but when you look at the overall industry for between now and by 2031, I think there's going to be an increase of over 25, 6% for the legal cannabis. Uh, yeah. Industry. So this week, yeah, this week there was a, a new report came out by research and markets and they came up with a 26.65, uh, over the next uh, 10 year period. So that was much higher than the other reports that we saw. Um, out in the marketplace and it's been revised and it's re revised upwards. So they have yeah. a very strong uh, wind behind their back. For sure. Especially with announcements like this week, I know the full uh, market hasn't fully digested it. And yes, it's not going to answer like, you know, as far as the safe Harbor language, as far as, you know, banks coming in and institutions coming in buying the stock, but it's a huge, huge uh, step in the right direction. When you get rescheduling in the U S that's massive. And uh, I think it just puts more pressure on a lot of these politicians in Washington to get something like a safe banking to pass. And we all know it will happen after that, which I firmly believe it'll create one of the biggest uh, opportunities that investors will ever see in their lifetime based on how much interest is already in this industry. All right, let's now shift to levered free cash flow and net income. What did you learn about this company? Yeah, so the, the leverage free cash flow was uh, $19.1 million last year. Uh, 1.35 million the year before. Um, so they, when you look at a net income at first glance, you may say, oh, the company lost $5 million uh, last year, but they actually had depreciation of $18 million. And then okay. I've been to most, I've been to different stores of theirs. Everything's very modern. The depreciation is a tax shield, uh, you know, essentially. And that makes smart uh, sense as a shareholder. But the real interesting thing is let, let's take, let's go back and let's look at this checkout analysis. And uh, yeah. so what I did to compare I took a look at them compared to the uh, the leading company in retail, which is Walmart, yeah. and also compared to something fun that our investor, our, our, our investors, or viewers are probably interested in, uh, being GameStop. Um, so here, here, here is it in a nutshell. When you spend ten dollars at Walmart, they make ten cents after okay. everything is said and done. High Tide, sixty cents. Wow! It's six times what Walmart is. So let that sink in for a business that has not been around uh, very long compared to Walmart. Well, let's Six face it. Six times what's left over at Walmart. 
they've got a lot of white label products, which we all know creates higher margins. In this case, mm -hmm. like you said, it's six times is what Walmart's doing. Combine that with the retail foot model. You can see the formula and the strategy as to what they're building out and why people are very interested in this company, right? Yeah. And you look at the last two weeks, everyone's talking about GameStop. Same thing. You spend $10 at GameStop, they lose four cents. Wow. So I, I don't know why people are interested in GameStop when you compare it to something like this. But it gets really intriguing when you compare it to something like Walmart. Interesting. All right. Last thing, and it's moment of truth time. Would you own and buy this stock? Absolutely. You know, I think it's a great exposure to the fast growing cannabis market and it's different. Uh, yeah. I'm not familiar with any other retail uh, pure play like this. That's quick growing. That's in a, a good financial uh, position as well. I think it's a very, very unique uh, company. And I'm also intrigued that it's in my uh, hometown of Calgary as well. There you go. And a lot of efforts that they're being made to dip into the U.S. market. There's actually a poll online earlier this week that showed that across the U.S., 70 percent of Americans are in favor of legalizing cannabis. So it's inevitable. It is coming, to say the least. But um, yeah, high tide, they benefit too, being on a senior exchange right now. So in the event that there's any kind of news, it's going to take a little bit of time for these other companies to uplist. But in that period of time, it's going to create a huge opportunity for a lot of Canadian LPs. Um, but yeah. Very, very big benefit, obviously, for them to be on a senior exchange already. Again, NASDAQ, ticker symbol H-I-T-I, -I, green check mark. This is a stock that you would own. All right. Three out of the four are green check marks. Great finds here this week. Um, you're back at it again early next to our early tomorrow to find out what the next four companies are, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want and we'll to write some editorials, too, uh, coming through the week highlighting what we found in a little more detail in these as well. Any questions that you guys want regarding any of the specific companies, or again, any companies that you think that we should actually take a look at, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to smash that like button because we want to take this viral, get more people listening to this YouTube channel, and most importantly, enhance some of these small cap ideas and obviously cannabis stocks that we cover very much appreciate the feedback. Um, as usual, as I said, log on to uh, the dalesreport.com, subscribe to our baked in newsletter. If you want to find out who the next four companies are, or even to learn more information about these specific stocks that we've highlighted. And as well, you're going to be launching over the next couple of weeks, full equity research reports on the top six cannabis companies in the industry. That's only available for people that subscribe to the baked in newsletter. And most importantly, Bill, and I know you really emphasize on this. You make these research reports very simple for the everyday retail investor to understand, right? Yeah, absolutely. We want to, uh, there's no point uh, taking, you know, trying to make things complicated when uh, business and stock analysis is actually pretty straightforward and simple. Yeah. So if you want to think like an analyst, make sure to log on and subscribe and make sure that you consume a lot of that content because we're doing this all for the everyday investor. Bill, appreciate your time. It's a long weekend up in Canada, so enjoy your holiday tomorrow. And we'll check back with you early next week. In the meantime, everybody, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and make sure to log on tomorrow at four o'clock. We'll have both Mr. Anthony Varel back from his you know, well-rested couple of days off, along with Dan Ahrens from Advisory Shares as we launched Trade to Black at four o'clock and talk about more stories pertaining to obviously rescheduling from last week and what we can anticipate heading into this week as far as the markets are concerned. And at the same time, too, we'll give you up-to-date information on anything that we hear regarding our network. Bill, have a great evening, and uh, we'll Take see you on care. Tuesday morning. Yep. Take care. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Hey, we're humming along, and it's all because of you and the audience and community that we're building. So, again, make sure to smash on that like button and leave lots of comments. Who do we have up next? You let us know. Who should we interview? What companies? Is there anything you like? Is there anything we're missing? We're all here for you. Let's get on with each other and build this community for all of us to benefit. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because in the end, we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks again, everyone.